Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to be doing an advanced tutorial as part of our Vicky 3 tutorial series and we are going to be talking about prices, specifically uh, target prices for various goods based on both PMs but also price equilibriums that are reached as the result of the interaction between various PMs. And so we're going to be discussing a little bit of game theory, a little bit of uh, examples of theoretical uh, markets where we actually solve for or approximate what the target price will be and also explain how the target price is actually going to shift on a variety of things not just the different PMs and how good the PMs are although this is one of the bigger drivers for how good PMs are but also based on what you care about namely it's going to change based on whether you care about construction which is what you care about in the early game or whether you care about labor or how much available workers you have which is a part of the mid game transition and so this tutorial will be a sort of transition in itself towards talking about mid game economies because we will show how how the price target you have for various goods, even with the exact same PMs, is going to vary wildly based on what it is that you care about. And so this might be a little bit heady. If this is kind of the first tutorial you've seen, this is probably not the one for you to watch. But other than that, let's jump in. So I didn't want to be too technical when discussing an equilibrium or a uh, indifference threshold as it relates to prices in a market. So uh, we're going to approach this from the perspective of more Victoria 3 than game theory. But often in Victoria 3, you get the advice you should focus on XYZ industry. And it's kind of vague as to what that means. What does it mean to focus on, you know, luxury clothes, for example? And what it means is you tolerate a lower price of the good before you stop building it. A good that you very often do not want to focus on, for example, is steel. You generally don't want to focus on steel and instead you would tolerate a higher price of steel when deciding what it is you want to build. Um, uh, often with regards to prices, you get this uh, advice, or and I've given this advice, that generally middling prices is good, and that's a bit of an oversimplification. You actually want the prices to vary based on the PM. And so, uh, in order to kind of really talk about this, we're going to need to jump into the spreadsheet. And so, if you have any children, please ask them to re leave the room, because here it is. We have the spreadsheet. Okay, so we will be discussing, uh, you know, kind of what things are through the spreadsheet. Now, a lot of you have seen the spreadsheet before. We're not going to ex over explain it too, too much. But we have this idea of the net, which is the output goods minus the input goods. And these are prices at base values. So very often we say sawmills is a really good industry. You should focus on it in the early game. And so we have this output of 1200, this input of 200 um, for a net of 1000. And one of the reasons it's really, really good in the early game is because it costs very little construction. And so you get a really high value on the net efficiency per construction which is a very important to think about thing to think about when you have peasants because you want to build up and get rid of the peasants as quickly as possible later on it's less important but we would say that sawmills is an industry you should focus on and so you should actually tolerate a higher price or a lower price now for example if we decrease the price of the uh this building or the output of the building softwood by you know one six then the output would be one thousand right uh, and we would have a minus 17 percent or so on the price and then we would get a smaller net okay if we oops. We actually don't want to do that. We want to control Z back because that is an uh, equation. So when we when we say we want to focus in it, on it, we would tolerate a higher price. But you notice it lowers the net, which would lower the net uh, construction efficiency. What we would theoretically want for our entire economy is such that every single output, every net construction efficiency, or every net, depending on what you're focusing on, we're gonna focus on net construction efficiency for now, values for the prices such that these numbers for every industry are equal. If these values for every single industry are equal, what you will have is you will have a situation where you do not care what building it is that you build. And so, for example, if we take a look, you know, uh, on industrial buildings and we see steel and we see that this is 30, we would need a really expensive steel price. Let's say steel prices are plus 50% 
or let's actually even call it, you know, plus 33%. In that instance, right, the output of this under Bessemer process would be 6,000. You see, we are approaching the 100 of the sawmills here. And so what this means to say is that we would tolerate a price in the sawmills, uh, let's call it, you know, uh, uh, minus 30% or minus 20% while simultaneously having a price of steel at plus 50%. And this would roughly be the situation where we would not care what we would build relative uh, when we're talking about steel relative to wood. Now steel is really, really inefficient. Wood is really, really, really efficient. And so you can see, you know, how this is a bit of a thing. And so, you know, one of the concepts we talk about uh, a lot in these tutorials is, you know, high prices are the chance to build a profitable building but you have to mediate this through the quality of the PM. And so a high steel price is actually not in the early game uh, when you care about construction is not really that good an opportunity to build a profitable building. And conversely, even if the wood is really, really, really cheap, you still have an opportunity to build a profitable building with the wood. Uh, even here in the late game, when wood is less good, we still have a minus 26% price. So coming back into the spreadsheet, what we want to reemphasize is that we are trying to get this self construction efficiency for every single one of these to be equal uh, based on the change in price. And so, for example, for steel, uh, what this will mean is that the steel price has to be high. But it is important to emphasize we have to calculate the prices of everything simultaneously. And this is difficult to do um, because I don't know how to do it in the Excel spreadsheet. But um, what we would have is we would have a high steel price, for example, because this is needed in order to get the net price high. So let's say our steel is a expensive enough that the output is instead giving us 7,000 instead of 4,500. So this is maybe a plus 40-ish uh, percent steel price. And you see this is kicked up to 92. But this in turn will, for example, if we're on steel tools, it will make the tools PM less efficient than it was before because it increases the price of the uh, inputs. Uh, steel being one of the big inputs, if we like kick this up to 2,400, suddenly it goes from 53 to 26. And so these are all going to be calculated simultaneously. Uh, and it is a theoretical value, we're not actually solving for it because we would have to solve for it for every single PM simultaneously. And so for example, if we had steel tools and we solved for the uh, the values of these prices, it would change as soon as we sh switch to machine tools, um, you know, because we would have more steel or we would have a much more efficient PM rather for the steel tools. And so the equilibrium of steel tools prices would lower. Um, everything that uses tools as an input would also the equilibrium value of the thing would increase and so it would become better to build this so this would drive down the prices and so all these things are moving you know in cohesion with each other but there are a few values you know when looking through the spreadsheet that you can hone in on that will give you an idea of you know what the price might look like and the first and most important one is the net if the net is really high uh and the this will give you a lot of cell efficiency per construction on base but it's going to be the net in conjunction with the efficiency value Anything with a really low efficiency value is going to be very, very sensitive uh, to you changing the prices. So for example, uh, steel in general, or sorry, not steel, tools in general have a really high efficiency once you're on machined steel, they will be able to tolerate the tools price going really low and still have a really high value here. Um, we have a really, really uh, uh, low efficiency on steel and so when we decrease the price of steel that's really going to decrease um, the net very very acutely and so we will almost always have a slightly or very uh, high steel price but if we take a look at something like the agriculture which has a relatively large net um, but this net is uh, going to be it's going to have it here let's scroll down a little and find a different one we're going to have this net here of 1700 on the dyes plantations. But the output is 2000. So this 1700, it's hyper, hyper, hyper efficient, which means you will be able to tolerate an extremely low equilibrium price on this type of building. Because if we decrease, if we had a minus 75% price, we would still have a positive net. Uh, you know, in this case, we would still have a positive net, which is insane. So these on these types of goods, you can actually tolerate incredibly low prices. Um, and so this is important to contrast, even if we have a similar net of like 1700 versus, you know, 1700 on 
electric arc process, that doesn't mean we can tolerate a really low price. You have to take into account this efficiency when looking at it and examining this, uh, you know, PM. And so a lot of the industrial goods will have a relatively low tolerance to you decreasing their price. And a lot of the agricultural goods will have an extraordinarily high tolerance to you decreasing their price. And the resource industries will be somewhere in between, but will be generally resilient uh, to you decreasing their price. And this is when we are carrying specifically, well, it's when you're carrying about pop or net construction efficiency. But when we have been focused on the early game, we have been focused on the efficiency per construction, taking into great account the construction. So let's take a look at a theoretical uh, sort of uh, economy or market where we only have five goods to look at. Uh, that way we can actually solve or approximately solve for what the values and prices of these things would be. Okay, so we have here a theoretical economy that's really relevant in the early game, and so it should have some applicability, which is that we have iron, wood, coal, and tool, and steel, specifically on condensing engine pump, sawmills with only softwood production, condensing engine pump for the coal as well, steel tools for the tools, and blister steel, which is the first steel PM. You achieve this situation in a lot of early games, and so it is, uh, you know, kind of, I think, the most useful one to consider, and is also a closed loop. Uh, you use all of these goods, and these are all the goods you use, and so I thought it would be a, a really good one. And so we have here kind of our normal things that we have in the other spreadsheet. We have also our base price for reference here. Um, we have the net construction efficiency, which is the value we were looking at primarily when we were talking earlier. Um, you see the softwood, the 100 here, and you see each of these PMs is more efficient. Uh, you see, or some are more efficient per construction than the other. And we know that the more efficient ones per construction, because we are choosing to care about construction in this example, the more efficient ones per construction, we are going to end up having a lower price on and the less efficient ones per construction, we are gonna end up having a higher price on. And this is what this value is here. This is the equilibrium price we have uh, needed in order to make it such that we are indifferent to which building we have. And if we take a look here, this is the equilibrium efficiency per construction. This is the equilibrium uh, efficiency independent of construction. And you see that, um, you know, uh, per building, we're producing 585 value on the wood, but it would cost half as much construction as iron. And so this will be roughly double and it costs one fourth the price of roughly speaking of steel, which is an 800 construction building. And it costs one third the, you know, construction cost of this. And so all of the net values when you consider the value at this price which is what this spreadsheet is doing is going to be such that these are roughly equal and you know kind of to drive home the point that everything is mutually dependent if we increase the price of let's say steel tools we don't just increase the equilibrium of you know this we also increase uh, decrease the equilibrium of these other things that have tools as an input and so we have to calculate all these simultaneously if the price of steel goes up suddenly we really really want to build these things and it makes building these other things that use steel as an input worse but coming into focus on how things actually play out we can see that you know our 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 focus and our emphasis on you know if this value is really low we would need a really high price to be indifferent and if this value is really high we would need a really low price to be indifferent this bears out and you can see that you know the equilibrium price for iron is just under you know even the equilibrium price for wood is minus 33%. It's roughly even on coal. It's slightly expensive on tools and it's real expensive on steel. And so when you find yourself in the early game and you're looking at the prices and you're like, wow, steel's expensive, uh, don't build more steel. And if you're like, wow, wood's, wood's kind of kind of cheap. I don't think I should build that. You should probably still build that. If you were in a situation, uh, you know, in this theoretical economy that doesn't exist, where wood was at minus 25% and steel was at plus 30% or plus 40%, you actually are supposed to build wood there. Uh, and this is something that's a, a little bit interesting and can also be like hard to wrap your head around, uh, but it is going to be that the PMs are such, when we say we should focus on this building, we are saying that we are going to tolerate tolerate a price that looks like this before this is going to be the building that we're no longer building. In this theoretical economy, this is what we would do. We would build the wood until we got to this price, and then we would avoid building the steel until steel got more expensive than this. Now, if wood's at minus 33% and steel's at 50%, then your best opportunity on a per construction basis for building the most profitable building will actually be building the steel. And so this 
understanding that prices are going to have certain equilibriums is important for kind of evaluating things. However, however, this equilibrium is actually going to shift over time because you do not always compare about care most about construction efficiency. Sometimes you care about pop efficiency. So we have here the same theoretical economy that does not exist, uh, but instead of caring about per week of construction, we are looking at the equilibrium efficiency per 100 workers. And so, you know, often in the early game, what you care about is construction because you have peasants, the peasants aren't employed. But if all the peasants are employed, suddenly getting rid of a peasant is not really the throttle. And what the throttle is, is we are trying to recomp our economy and we are instead caring about workers, the number of workers we have. And we see here the equilibrium efficiency. So first of all, it's going to be different because this is, we're looking at the value per 100 workers and this is per week of construction. So you actually, you can't compare the equilibrium efficiencies here directly. This isn't what we're talking about. But what we see here is when all of these are equal now, we're gonna see something a little bit different we are gonna see much different price equilibriums for all of these. Now, steel still sucks. Um, steel still sucks and it's still gonna always be a little expensive and it's gonna be very sensitive to price stuff. But remember, wood we said was not particularly sensitive to price. Um, and it's really not. Uh, but it is sensitive to the number of workers you have. If we come over here and we see the net is going to be 1,000. That is a smaller net um, that per worker that we're getting. Uh, and so this is going to mean that we are going to not have as much wood, but it's also not very sensitive because it's highly, highly efficient. Um, and so we can see an increased wood price in order to get the equilibrium kind of the same. And so we see wood actually pulls up to plus 25%. And so when you start running out of labor, you will notice the price of wood kind of starting to creep up. If we hop back into the game, we can show you a perfect example of this. We can show you uh, Minas Gerais, uh, which we have built up as kind of our industrial sector. If we look at the wood logging camps, they are not fully employed. Um, now they are profitable, but the reason that they're not fully employed is that the labor could be better used elsewhere because they are not pop efficient. And in some sense, these are our new subsistence farms. When we get migrants, they don't join the subsistence farms, they join the logging camps because there's available labor here. And so it's still nice to have these buildings because they're effectively an improved uh, you know, logging camp. And then also uh, you, when you have them built higher, you get more throughput, other things like this. It's not a complete waste that we had built this wood early on. And Early on, it was very, very good because it was very efficient per construction, but now we're kind of entered a new, a new era, as it were, and we should expect to see, as you run out of labor, you should expect to see stuff change in price and that this price is fine. It's no longer the case when we're out of labor, it's no longer the case that minus 30% is a nice time to build, you know, more wood. Uh, in fact, you actually would not want to build wood even if it was 20% more expensive. You would prefer to build steel even if steel was, you know, uh, plus 15 and wood was plus 20. You would prefer to build steel because steel is going to be more efficient. It's going to be more efficient per worker. And so this is an important one to consider. Also, you can see here we do have the very nice situation where iron and coal are exactly the same in price. And you can notice the things that have changed is everything that has more construction cost, right? Everything that has more construction cost than the iron and coal, uh, in this case, the steel and the, and the tools, this has come down in the equilibrium value, meaning that you are going to build it uh, at an earlier threshold. And everything that is less expensive in terms of construction has gone way, way, way up. And this has some cascading and secondary effects where, you know, if you're in the late game or if you're in the early game, Exporting wood is actually excellent, right? Because it's so efficient per construction and you're just trying to de-peasant your pops, exporting wood's really great. But then when you reach the later game, you actually can import wood and instead try and build buildings and focus on buildings that are more efficient on a per pop basis. Let's take a look at a second example. So in our second example, we have the same theoretical five good economy with the five PMs that does not exist in Victoria 3. Uh, but the difference is we have turned on water to boiler on the steel tools, which cost 10 coals. Notably, 10 coal equilibrium price is 30 here. And also water tube on blister steel, which costs five coal and five tools, 
tools being 38, we are saving less or it's less efficient uh, per labor saved for the steel. And so you see that, uh, you know, there's a pretty big come down uh, in the price of tools, but the come down in the price of, uh, you know, steel is much more modest. But this is efficiency, again, net efficiency per 100 workers. And so we see an interesting, you know, phenomenon here where we are going to get also a secondary effect from this decreased price of tools, which is that we are also going to decrease the equilibrium price of coal and iron. And this is why you have to calculate all of these simultaneously in this theoretical abstraction, but understanding the ideas should generally be sufficient. The reason why the equilibrium price of coal and iron dropped is because tools are an input for these. They've also dropped in the case of softwood, but it's dropped very slightly such that we did not actually change the equilibrium value here. And instead, in rather than being 28.26, uh, the thing is all worth more at 28.48. And one of the reasons why this hasn't moved that much is because uh, wood has an incredibly uh, resilient efficiency. And so it will be affected less uh, by price changes um, you know of the of its input because if you take a look the outputs 1200 the inputs only 200 the input on condensing engine pump conversely is 1050 and so this is why we see a much bigger effect um you know change in the prices of the iron mines and the coal mines because the price of the coal or the price of the tools and also here's a, a better one the price of the tools in the case of the coal mines is much much bigger relative to you know the price of the tools in the sawmills and so when that price goes down it's going to have a bigger effect on the equilibrium price of this value uh, but we can see this environment where you know turning on the labor saving pms is going to make it so that everything is more efficient per uh per what is it uh, per worker but what it's also going to do is it's going to make our entire economy cost more construction to have everyone employed because we could employ for you know 10 of these buildings, we can employ 46,000 pops. In order to employ 46,000 pops when we are employing 3K per building, we need a whole lot more buildings. And so when you use labor saving PMs, you are generally going to, generally based on the price of the, uh, the goods, right? If, if coal is extremely expensive, turning on this labor saving PM will not make it more efficient per worker. But when it is more efficient, um, what this will end up doing is it will effectively increase the price uh, of all of our buildings. And in exchange, we will get more efficient per worker. You notice the net here, the net has gone down on each building, but we just build more of these buildings. And so you can think of this as a further extension of the idea that we are going to switch from being construction efficient to being pop efficient, and we can switch from building stuff like wood to building stuff like steel. Uh, and then, you know, a further extension of building the steel is building the steel with the labor saving PM that will kill the net efficiency, but instead will make it like we have fewer steel buildings uh, in the sense of how many people are being employed uh, and it will make it more pop efficient. We will just have to construct more. And so the construction, even when you start recomping towards steel, construction will be still more, still useful because it'll allow you to further recomp towards turning on labor saving PMs here. Let's fiddle with the PMs a little bit just to kind of show how which PM you have is important uh, for this equilibrium price and it's gonna change. So uh, in the case of blister steel, getting upgraded to bezimer process is going to increase the input uh, amount of iron from uh, 40 to 60, and it's also going to increase steel up to 90. And we can see immediately we will have, wow, 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 this is way more efficient. If we take a look you know, back in the spreadsheet over on the steel tools here, let's slide all the way to the left, we can see that the net for Bessemer process is much better than blister steel, right? And so it's not the case that you're going to always want to tolerate such an expensive steel price, but you're going to want to do it when you're on blister steel and these other PMs are condensing engine pump and, you know, also on the wood, it's sawmills. So coming back, coming back to this tab, you see that, wow, this value has increased a lot. And so what we could do is we could, you know, pull down this equilibrium price quite a bit and still you know have these effects but look now suddenly when we pull down the price of steel now the tools are way more efficient and so we would have to adjust each of these by hand but you can see that you know something to the tune of a plus 20 percent price might be more reasonable but when we decrease the price of tools 
we will further increase the efficiency of the stuff that is going to be using these tools, right? Um, because uh, tools in decreasing in price increases the net of all these other things. Uh, but you can see how this is going to affect things and also how that you know, you are going to want to tolerate a much different steel price on the basis of how things are going to be looking uh, in in regards to, you know, uh, the PM. And so let's also just do this uh, for the other one. Uh, we're just going to do the one other one and just change these uh, values here. And you can see now suddenly this 15% that that's not going to cut it. If we cut it down to like 50, um, we get kind of an equilibrium -ish look where we are going to actually have base price and then expensive wood. And so this is interesting. And I think this is also important to illustrate that this is highly variable based on the PM and it's going to vary on all the PMs. And so you would have to solve for one specifically economy with all the PMs when you're finding an equilibrium threshold, but you don't have to solve it. You can kind of just look at these and get a general idea where you know um, how how much stuff is going to be affected by taking a look at you know the efficiency in terms of how sensitive it is to prices and then also looking at the net um, and this is going to uh, the net divided by the number of workers is going to be important for informing you know when you transition to oop, that's the wrong tab more of a caring about workers type of economy what the prices are going to look at but perhaps the most profound thing is you are going to go from a point from having a really low wood price uh, to having a high wood price and this is perfectly natural. So the same construction attitude you have for wood when you care about construction is going to be different attitude than you have when you're caring about workers. I do want to point out that there are multiple equilibriums at which all these numbers will be roughly equal, or there's multiple price equilibriums where all of these equilibrium efficiencies will be roughly equal, but they could be higher. So for example, if we had slightly higher prices on all of these, we could have a, you know, a situation where the equilibrium efficiency on all of these was somewhere around 31 instead and so there's going to be multiple equilibriums and it's more of a relational thing also um, if you are controlling for these because this is a closed loop you could include the rest of the economy around these prices being the equilibrium uh, but you would just have to note that you know for example when tools dives in price or takes a dive in price when you start caring about workers this for example will increase the equilibrium efficiency of something like that uses tools as an input like clothes which uses quite a bit of tools as an input this would increase the efficiency and would also pull down the price of clothes simultaneously but you could in theory look to have these be your target prices i suppose in the situation where you're on these pms um, but this is not taking into account the rest of your economy and it's not letting you know when you would want to build like clothes for example uh, or at what price point you would want to build those relative to these price points but if you're only going to be building these things um, this can be an okay-ish guide as to the exact points at which you want to build these things with the sensitivity to the fact that if you're building one place for mappy reasons very often you're going to run out of uh, labor there pretty quickly and then you're going to notice the wood there is not going to be all that great when you run out of labor relative to the tools and so you can also plan ahead and look at you know how quickly you're running down the uh, population of the peasants and if you're starting to run it down pretty quick pull back on the wood and instead swap to the tools or uh, the iron or something like this um, and you'll this will be in terms of practice or implementation um, this is something that you might want to do I don't think we're going to have a summary here because I think that this is kind of hard to summarize because the summary is incredibly basic the summary is um, you know there are going to be variable, the prices, your price target for industries is going to vary on the basis of how efficient they are, and you need to calculate all of it simultaneously uh, in order to have those things. And that's kind of the, the summary, and the bigger the net, generally, uh, and also the lower uh, or the higher the efficiency, um, generally you are going to be able to have highly variable prices with really high efficiency, and the bigger your net, generally the lower prices you're going to have uh, when you are focusing on, and the bigger the net per construction, you're you're going to have a much lower price um, and then when you start caring about labor it's just the bigger net is going to lead you to have a lower price when considering all of the prices relative to each other and so um, when evaluating pms you do want to think about and consider um, how you price equilibriums uh, and the fact that you aren't targeting a specific price you're not targeting zero uh, percent or zero when you say middling is the good target you're not targeting zero overall 
you are in fact targeting slightly variable prices depending on what's important, whether it's construction or workers, you are going to be targeting prices that are going to vary on the basis of how efficient the PMs are, which is why you should never try and get, you know, steel really, really, really cheap. And conversely, you should never try and get uh, something like dyes really, really, really expensive. Uh, because if dyes are even slightly expensive, it's a disgustingly efficient PM, but also you will see the dye price generally collapse. Uh, and also the dyes will generally start to be not as efficient per worker because you have automatic irrigation. This brings you up to 1700, but then I think your labor saving PM, the only one is something like railways. I haven't taken a close look at it, which I think brings you to 4,500 workers you're not going to be super worker efficient. And so um, looking at the PMs as a whole, uh, the 1700 with 4,500 workers is not going to outperform, uh, you know, something like uh, 2,700, or actually diesel, this might be a bad example, like 1,900, the motor industries, um, which will often, you will be able to labor save it down below uh, the worker threshold. And so, um, this is kind of uh, how you're going to evaluate everything when you are considering the fact that prices don't happen in a vacuum, they happen at equilibrium levels, uh, and what your target is is con highly contingent upon, you know, what the net and stuff is of all of these PMs. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Um, sorry if it was a little bit heady and abstract, but I do think this is kind of important for understanding uh, some of the things as we transition to talking about the middle game, because in the middle game, there are two inflection points that are really important when you stop caring about construction as much as labor, and when you stop caring about, uh, you know, capitalists as much as you do GDP. And so this is going to be an important uh, bridge to our uh, kind of coming up episodes as far as the tutorial goes. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, do the YouTube algorithm thing and have a good day.